Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be a new update video for the Gumball Everything Machine. I think maybe this might be update number five, maybe six. I don't know. But anyway, unlike the previous update videos, which basically consisted of me announcing a new file package that would allow the Gumball to transform into yet another machine, and then I would use the majority of the video demonstrating how this new conversion works, this video is going to be a little different. In this video, I'm going to be addressing some of the issues I think the machine has and maybe make some suggestions on how we can make it better. This is why I love 3D printing for this project. Not only can we easily improve the machine, but 3D printing allows it to be entirely customizable. I hope to eventually create several hobby or maybe industry specific configurations. Like for example, maybe a jeweler's configuration or a knife maker, watch maker, or model maker's configuration. But anyway, in this video, we're going to try to improve some of the machine's weak spots. I have a bunch of new conversions finished. I just need to finish editing the videos. One of them is a conversion that adds a tail stock and a cross slide, which took a really long time to get it right, by the way. And because of that, I haven't put out a video in a while. So I figured I would put out this short video while I finish editing the longer ones. Okay, so in my opinion, the first obvious area that can use improvement is the stability of the machine. I mean, for most hobbyists, it's probably fine the way it is, but there are some uses that require more precision than the machine's currently capable of. The first thing we can do to improve stability, which also happens to be the easiest, is just to secure the machine to the bench. The Gumball is a very small and lightweight machine with an incredibly powerful motor for its size. So when running at very high speed, the machine can wander or vibrate, especially if the table it's running on isn't entirely flat. So to solve that problem, I created this. It's a clamp that allows you to secure the Gumball to your workbench that also doubles as a tool holder. You have space to store your discs, your polishing wheels, your lathe chuck, assorted tooling, and you have a space here for holding your files. If you're working on a project where you need more room or if you want to keep shavings off your tooling, the tool holder pops off and you can just temporarily set it aside. This setup secures the machine to your bench without sacrificing the portability or versatility of the machine, and it should reduce vibration by like 80%. For those who require even more stability, we need to take a look at the motor. These cheap 500 watt spindle motors are pretty amazing for the price. I mean, what do these motors cost? Like 20 something bucks? For that price, there's really not much to complain about. But compared to, say, a much more expensive spindle motor, they do have some issues. The first is this rear fan. These injection molded rear fans are usually not balanced very well from the factory, if at all. And as a result, the vast majority of ambient vibration the spindle might be experiencing is almost certainly coming from the fan. I say most likely because it's been my experience that these motors are really hit or miss. Some might arrive operating beautifully without the slightest vibration, while others, depending on how much precision you need, will require you to balance the fan properly in order to get smooth operation. To improve the stability via the fan, you have two options. First is to remove the existing fan and then balance it before reinstalling it. I'm not going to waste time explaining how that's done because there's already at least one video on YouTube demonstrating the process, so I'll just provide a link to that video in the description. The second option you have is to just 3D print an entirely new fan, and I made a file for that. This new fan has some benefits over the stock fan. I noticed with at least my 3D printer that the printed fan is pretty much almost perfectly balanced right off the printer, so you don't have to waste that much time balancing it. But that really depends on the type of 3D printer you have, how well your printer is calibrated, and how well of a job you did removing the support material. So if you decide to print this fan, you have to at least check to ensure it's balanced. Otherwise, this entire exercise was for nothing. And if you don't properly balance it, you could end up having even worse vibrations than you started with. But again, for most hobbyists, the machine is probably fine the way it is. Balancing the fan is really only necessary for those whose work requires a higher level of precision, like stone faceting, for example. Okay, so this new fan has some improvements over the stock fan. It's a little bigger, a little wider, has these one millimeter slightly raised borders. I'm not sure if you could see them on the video, but they're there. I added them on each side, and what these do is they help guide the sandpaper perfectly straight while applying it. 
and the gap is exactly 30 millimeters, so you know exactly how wide to cut the sandpaper in order to get a perfect fit. And lastly, I added these holes around the perimeter that will allow you to use the fan to both lock and precisely index the spindle. I imagine this would be really handy for stone setting, among other things. The next improvement I made is this articulating tool holder. It gets attached here in the rear corner, and it has an interchangeable head that allows you to attach custom jigs. This is still the old fan, so you'll notice it's still a little wonky. So let's try the new fan. We'll test it with this drill bit sharpening jig. And with the articulating arm, you can get the sharpening angle you're looking for very easily. Look how much less vibration there is in the fan. That's a huge improvement. You can also attach the articulating arm to the front of the machine. And if you want, you can add this locking ball joint that will give you an additional axis of movement. I also printed this E16 collet that also snaps onto the adapter. And with this, you can hold and position whatever you want. You could even 3D print your own oddly shaped collets like this square shape or a loop for magnification. E16 collets are a bit of a double-edged sword in my opinion. I mean, I love them. There's no more accurate work holding option, but it's a pain in the neck sometimes to have to waste time finding the right sized collet. So to make life easier, I made this collet holder that snaps to the front of the machine. And now all of your collets are right there to help you quickly choose the right size. This is a new file too, by the way. It's a knife sharpening tool and it works really well. Next, I'm gonna be making a larger sharpening jig that attaches here for sharpening things like axes and hatchets. And the final improvement I made this week was to deal with these unsightly wires that protrude from the spindle motor. These ugly electrical tape covered wires always bothered me. So yesterday I made a file for this corrugated tube. The way it works is you submerge it in hot water and then you have a few seconds to mold it into the shape you need before it hardens back up. I haven't had time to install it yet, but this should make those exposed wires look much nicer and protect them better as well. Recently, someone left a comment on one of my videos. They said something like, yeah, it's a beautiful machine, but it suffers from the same problem as Dremel in that it's too time consuming to have to constantly switch between configurations. I mean, that person's not wrong, right? Multi-use machines can be annoying, especially if you're more than just a hobbyist and you have enough work to justify a bunch of dedicated machines. But first of all, the gumball is more powerful and versatile than Dremel. And second, the gumball has this DIN plug here. This DIN plug is directly connected to the power supply. It shares the same speed controller, power supply, and forward and reverse switch. Meaning anyone who finds themselves with so much work that they could benefit from a dedicated machine, all they would need to do is buy another one of these $20 spindle motors, print the machine that they need more, uh, whether it's a flat lap or a wet saw, and just plug into the original machine, and you're piggybacking off all of the original internals. Basically giving you unlimited dedicated machines for a cost of just an additional 20 something dollars each. That said, I get a hell of a lot of use out of just this bench mounted configuration here, without having to change the setup at all. If your job doesn't require too much precision, this setup here can almost always get the job done. All right, guys, I think that's going to do it for this video. As usual, if you want to participate in the project and build your own gumball, all the information will be in the description. A few people recently have backed the project but didn't follow up with an email. I believe PayPal privacy automatically hides the sender's contact info in some cases, unless you choose otherwise. Because when I log into PayPal, I can't find any contact info for those backers. So in these situations, I have no way to contact you. So please, if you're going to back the project, please send me an email. I'm not making any money off of this project and I reinvest all of the donations back into buying supplies, materials, tools to test, different motors, and I even bought another 3D printer. Several backers have decided to buy a 3D printer just to participate in this project. All of them bought Ender 3s, so I thought it would be a good idea to buy an Ender 3 myself so I could help troubleshoot for them. This project, especially the filming, is incredibly time consuming. 
so I just don't have time to track down backers who donated but didn't send me an email. I mean, I wouldn't even know where to start, so please, if you decide to back the project, just send me an email. That said, I want to thank everyone who supported the project so far. You guys are awesome. Many of you have given more than I asked for, so I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I think the project is really coming along, and the other day I looked back at where it all started, and it's come so far. But this... It's really just the beginning. I have a full notebook of attachments and conversion ideas, and I think a lot of you are going to be shocked at where this project eventually goes. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.